to allow me to receive evidence and testimony on the matters that are pending. I will make a recommendation only to the county commissioners. I do not make the final decision. I will be submitting my recommendation to staff within two weeks of this evening's hearing. The application will then be scheduled for del deliberations before the county commissioners. If you wish to give testimony, I need you to fill out one of the sheets in the back, and when you come to the podium, please give your name and address for the record before you begin your testimony. So first, staff will introduce uh, each application, then we will hear from the applicant. After the applicant's testimony, we will then get into the public comment sheets. We will hear from those who are in favor, those who are neutral, and those who are opposed. The public not speaking uh, will be read into the record. We will then give the applicant and or representative an opportunity for rebuttal of any testimony stated into the record from the public before we close this public hearing. After that point, we will receive no more testimony. The time limits are 30 minutes for the applicant's presentation, uh, five minutes for each public testimony, and 15 minutes for the applicant rebuttal. Uh, I would ask that you direct all of your testimony to me and not to the audience. And with that, are there any questions uh, regarding the proceedings tonight? Mr. Hearing Examiner, before we go into the staff presentation, I'd just like to do a quick introduction. I'm David Callahan, Community Development Director, and I am also the Zoom host this evening. And so for those of you that have Zoomed in, I have your microphones muted. When it comes time for the uh, public to participate, I'll ask you if, you're, if you would like to and I'll mute you at that time. Thank you, and is um, Zach up first? I believe so, yeah, we have. Zachary, take it away. Yes. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Yes. Good evening, Planner Zach Trevino for the record, presenting case number CUP20-0008, a request by Green Ferry Water and Sewer District for a public utility complex facility consisting of a booster pumping station. The project site is located south of the Spokane River, across from the city of Post Falls, south of Riverview Drive. The parcel itself is slightly under one acre in size. It is surrounded by residential development located west of Snowshoe Road, a road within a public right-of-way that is privately maintained. The site contains two reservoirs, one 120,000 gallon reservoir and one 100,000 gallon reservoir operated by Green Ferry Water and Sewer District. The parcel is in the agricultural suburban zone, a zone that does allow public utility complex facilities with conditional use permit approval, and it has a comprehensive plan designation of suburban. This aerial view of the project site gives a sense of the topography. The project site itself is relatively flat. It does have some mild slope, but it is located on top of a hill, significantly elevated above the Spokane River elevation. You can see Riverview Drive and Snowshoe Road in this picture, and you can see on the right-hand side of the screen where they intersect. This is the site plan provided by the applicant which depicts the two reservoirs that exist on site and the booster pumping station that is proposed. It is important to note that this site plan is a revised version that is different from the original site plan submitted and different from the one reflected in the staff report. This site plan is dated September 30th, so it was recently received, and that is important to note. Although staff doesn't believe that the change constitutes a significant revision of the request. It is a slight revision to the location of the booster station, but the booster station that is being proposed is, is no different. Um, but I wanted to bring that to your attention. So as you can see on the site plan, the booster station is going to be located uh, just south of the cylindrical 100,000 gallon reservoir. It is going to be accessed from the east. There is a common driveway extending from Snowshoe Road it crosses two parcels, and there is an easement in place providing legal access to the project site. The 
existing driveway is unimproved for um, for most of its length and the applicant does intend to surface it with crushed aggregate at time of development. The facility itself is made necessary in order to ensure adequate water and fire flows for the Greensbury Water and Sewer District service area. Uh, with increasing residential development in the area, uh, it is important to ensure that with the the increased demand, there is adequate flow in, in the event of a fire emergency, and this station will go towards ensuring that the reservoirs can be replenished at a quicker rate. Um, the, the booster station itself will be a, a, an equipment um, component housed within a 100 square foot building uh, located, again, adjacent to the reservoirs. And so the main purpose of this is to, uh, to enhance service to the, the districts connections. These are some photos of the site. The top left depicts the approach from Snowshoe Road where the common driveway departs. Uh, this is facing west. The top right is a portion of the existing driveway. Uh, currently the site is only accessed for uh, routine maintenance and water testing. It's, it's relatively rare that vehicle traffic would access the site. As you can see, the driveway is unimproved, a dirt surface, and this will be improved and surfaced with gravel aggregate um, at time of installation of the pumping station. The bottom left photo depicts the two reservoirs. This is facing northeast. The rectangular reservoir is in the foreground, and the cylindrical reservoir is behind that in the rear ground. Um, the bottom right gives a little better picture of a portion of the cylindrical reservoir. This is showing the location of the proposed booster pumping station. Uh, it's on relatively flat ground, slightly sloped, um, near the eastern property line in a grassy clearing. These are some other views. This top photo shows the cylindrical reservoir a little more clearly. Um, the bottom right is a picture of the nearest adjacent residence, which is located approximately 175 feet west of the proposed booster pumping station location. Agencies with jurisdiction have been consulted and they have provided comment. Uh, there were no major objections to the request. Uh, the two reviews of note are that Post Falls Highway District will require the applicant to obtain an approach permit um, in order to access the site and the Department of Environmental Quality actually recommended approval um, stating that the, uh, the facility would be essential in, in you know, assuring adequate service for fire flows. Um, the other agencies did not pro provide objections. Some did provide standard requirements that will become conditions of approval should the use be approved. Public comment um, has, has been occurring. Uh, the site was noticed, but no comments have been received to date. Staff has analyzed the proposed use in accordance with the Kootenai County Land Use and Development Code and has determined that the applicant has, has demonstrated feasibility um, of compliance with the standards of the Land Use Code. Uh, the proposal does comply with the performance standards uh, for public utility complex facilities. And furthermore, no sensitive areas are affected by this use. The site does not contain any wetlands, uh, streams, um, steep slopes. And so I stand for any questions that you may have. Uh, I have no questions for you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, his exhibit will be HE 1001, the updated site plan. Okay, thank you. Zach, does the applicant want to speak and is he or she on Zoom? The applicant is on Zoom. They'll have to unmute themselves. Is it uh, John Austin? Correct, John Austin. John, I've just tried to unmute you. I had muted myself, I guess. <laughs> so something people have been trying to do for a long time. <laughs> well, we hear you loud and clear. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, we hear you loud and clear. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to meet with you this evening. Uh, joining me is uh, our engineer, Roger Glesner. 
and I believe our chairman Steve Tanner was also uh, trying uh, was going to try to be a part of the discussion as well. So we appreciate the opportunity to present this and answer any questions. Uh, under the existing conditions, uh, we currently have two uh, municipal reservoirs uh, known to us as the Tanglewood and Snowshoe Reservoirs. Uh, they've been on the site uh, for uh, 40 years for one and 16 for the other. So it's been there for a long time. Uh, it's ideally located to provide the elevation along with two other district reservoirs as necessary to provide adequate pressure and fire flows for the district's 400 hookups. The site's the end of a private road, which actually we have come to find has actually been accepted by uh, Post Falls Highway District. Um, we found that out after the narrative, uh, either adjacent to the site or nearby. We haven't received any uh, complaints from residents. It's a very remote site. We only occasionally uh, go there as district contractor for testing and routine maintenance. The proposed use of the adjacent Riverview Heights subdivision, which is a 26 lot subdivision plus one lot for irrigation, um, approved by the county, the district has required the developer to provide two booster stations that will provide water for the district's existing wells to those reservoirs. The lower station is located within the subdivision and has been completed. The second site is to be located on the side of the reservoirs, and I believe you'll see that on the uh, plan that, uh, that was presented this evening. The second station on the site is comprised of a small building, about 100 square feet, that will house the booster pump and associated controls. Now, there will be a water line to the station from an easement allowed for that purpose, and then another water line that will run to the reservoirs. Uh, the reason the board has asked for uh, this conditional use permit is uh, we've received voter approval to issue $1.8 million in water system improvements that are going to upgrade our uh, system, which is over 40 years old. Uh, the ability to boost water to those two reservoirs is a key component of the board's plan to augment the fire flows from them. Uh, the board approved the Riverview Heights subdivision with the provision that the booster station on the reservoir site be provided by the developer. This will save the district tons of thousands of dollars, and so we can use that money uh, as part of our $1.8 million bond that was approved uh, two years ago. Uh, we have received approval from the Kootenai Fire District Fire Marshal for the project because it provides better fire flows in the event of a fire in the western portion of our district. Um, by approving this request, the safety of district property owners will be greatly enhanced. It helps us to supply more water to the reservoirs as they're drawn down to fight a potential fire. Uh, since it's in a very rural but fast growing area, it's really important that fire safety be provided, and this booster station helps to ensure that. And there are no variances or deviations from standards uh, for this request. Uh, and we thank you very much for your consideration of the request. And if I or um, Mr. Glesner uh, can answer any questions. I'd be more than happy to do so. Uh, I guess uh, the only question I would have um, would be uh, the reasoning for uh, moving the location of the, of the pump uh, and the building housing it. Could, could you hear my question, sir? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've. I, right into the I guess we've been having some uh, problem with the microphones. Um, uh, what's uh, what was the reason for uh, changing the location of the pump house? Yes, um, the original uh, and this uh, Roger can clarify this more. But the original submittal uh, had an area that looked like it was for future uh, 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 development. It actually was not the booster station site uh, when we got the easement finished and recorded. That's when we put the booster station on the you know, Roger dead on the site plan. And we found out that it was within a 30 feet uh, setback. And so uh, uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Trevino, we were able to uh, get that change made. Uh, kind of a late hour to do it, but uh, uh, thanks to your staff, we were able to do that and locate the booster station uh, in a proper place uh, on the site. OK, that's the only question I had. Thank you. Um, I do believe 
from there, uh, we have not received any public comment. Uh, there's no write-ins or there hasn't been anybody who's joined the Zoom meeting who wants to comment. So we can skip right through that part. Is there um, anyone on Zoom that wants to talk at this time? Hearing none, I think you're free to go ahead. Okay, um, so that means the, the applicant rebuttal is uh, would be redundant. Um, uh, I think with that, um, we can conclude uh, the hearing for case number CUP 20-0008. Uh, and we thank you, uh, Zach uh, and Mr. Austin, uh, for your time and your presentations. Thank you. All right, David, are we? Glad stepping in. For Glad the stepping next in. Hearing. Okay, we're ready to so move on to the next on one. The okay, the next uh, case will be um, variance or VAR 20 uh, 0005. And Vlad, if you're ready, you can, you can take it away. Good evening. For the record, Vlad Finkel with Kuki County Community Development. This is a request for a variance submitted by First Light Properties LLP in case number VR 20-0005. The variance request is to a front yard setback in the agricultural suburban zone. The subject parcel of land is located east of City of Corn Lane in the county unincorporated area. It is located specifically between the um, Corland Lake Drive right-of-way and Silver Beach Road right-of-way with the primary access from the top directly from Silver Beach Road. Silver Beach Road is located within a 50-foot prescriptive easement um, that the uh, Highway District um, <clears throat> maintains at this time. As I stated, this is an agricultural, the parcel is within the agricultural suburban zone. The applicant submitted a conceptual site plan with this application that shows the location of the proposed residence in question. Um, the request is to construct a residence within right on the prescriptive 50-foot easement line encroaching 25 feet into the front yard set, um, setback, meaning that the residents would, if this application is approved, it would be a variance to 25 feet with a zero-foot setback from the 50-foot prescribed easement. What that entails is that the code has a provision that basically requires a, any prescriptive easement to be 50 feet wide centered on a road. So in this case, the house would be constructed within 25 feet from the center line of the road. Of course, that means that it's, it would not allow for any cantilevers or roof eaves to encroach into the easement. Those would have to be constructed outside of the prescriptive easement. As you may know, uh, Mr. Gary Examiner, after visiting the site, that this is a very challenging property to, to develop. It has extremely steep slopes towards Corn Lake Lake, and as the applicant had explained, there is an approved septic system um, that the Health District has preliminarily reviewed and approved, and therefore, there's very limited room to develop on this site. The other concern that staff have with this specific property due to slopes is we have seen um, in the past decade or so, or historically, uh, there being issues or concerns with the shipping of the hillside. In fact, there has been at least one residence in the area uh, further up the hill that 
had significantly moved and the house was condemned. For that reason, staff requested that the applicant complete a comprehensive geotech analysis for the assessment of soil conditions to determine if this site is actually feasible for development. And as you can see on the, uh, on, on the overhead is the conclusions and the recommendations of the geotechnical evaluation do in fact state that this site can be developed. And there are specific requirements for future site disturbance, compaction, um, backfill, um, grading, and the physical construction of the found footings and foundation for this residence. These are some of the photos of the subject property. As you can see, it slopes um, towards the lake. Uh, significantly, I believe at some point it's like a 100% slope, meaning it's a 45 degree angle further uh, towards the lake. We did solicit comments from various agencies and a majority of the comments were in whether they were either in support or neutral. Uh, one of the uh, agencies, the fire district stated it's likely that the applicant would have to place a no parking sign um, on site so as to make sure that it's the road is passable uh, because it's fairly narrow in the area. And we didn't receive a comprehensive letter from the highway district with a request for future assessment of the stormwater plans associated with the residents on site. Um, the due to limitations or space limitations on the property, the applicant proposed to have the stormwater features including swales or retention ponds within the uh, prescriptive easement area and the highway district uh, approved it. Uh, they don't have any issue with it at this time. One of the um, uh, items that I would like to bring into the record is that after the initial response, which is dated back to July of this year, which is included in the initial staff report, we received last Friday a letter from the highway district that I would like to enter into the record. It's dated September 25th, last Friday. After receiving this letter, I immediately contacted the east side highway district official to ask um, the purpose of the second letter and they advised me that there's been some slight changes that the applicant proposed on a, a modified site plan to the stormwater features. Staff does not see that being an issue because the applicant will have to um, work with the highway district on approval of those stormwater um, improvements but we do want to make sure that um, this letter is included as a condition of approval in the report. And basically we could add it on to the existing letter that's in the record for the applicant to comply with. So they would have to comply to the two exhibits entered uh, originally as part of the agency review process and tonight. Um, and to date we don't have that modified or revised site plan, but I would ask that you have the applicant cl clarify what minimal changes were made. We received a total of three comments on this request with two to support, one opposed, and the main concern is that this was a very narrow and congested road, and the, um, the concern is that the residents would be too close to the driving service or facility road. Staff's recommendation, we believe that if the applicant can comply with the geotechnical analysis and the remaining conditions of approval that this application should be approved. One, for the fact that the existing residences in the area and the location of them is fairly consistent with the applicant's proposal. And um, <clears throat> moreover, it's, it's quite clear that the topographical features on site present an undue hardship that would make it very difficult, next to impossible, to, re to build a residence without complying with the, with, if they had to comply with the setback requirements in the agricultural suburban zone. I stand for any questions that you have at this time. I have no questions for you at this time, Vlad. Thank you. Last updated highway district letter will be HE1000. 
Okay, thank you. Connie, are you speaking on behalf of the applicant? Yes, I am. Okay, you're unmuted and ready to go. Okay, wonderful. Uh, well, thank you for um, having me here tonight. I will uh, be presenting on two variances, which are for two properties that are located um, directly to a, directly adjacent to each other and under the same ownership. So we'll see some similarities between the presentations. Um, but there are some differences with the properties. So with your permission, I would like to go ahead and share my screen. Go right ahead. Let me make sure I get the right presentation. Are you seeing the presentation? Yes. Yes, yes, go ahead. Okay, again, we're here tonight to um, hear presentations for the First Light Properties LLP Variance Request. And um, the owner of this property is First Light Properties LLP, and Shauna Clark represents the LLP. And I believe that she is in attendance tonight in the same. Um, as I mentioned, um, I am, I've been working on this project for Ms. Clark, and I am a certified planner uh, working for Stonehenge Development. Tonight, the topics that we'll cover, um, will, um, I'll be moving through them fairly quickly, but this is the range of topics. Um, we'll discuss the location, subject property, zoning and comprehensive, what our proposal is, the circumstances which justify the variances, because in this case we do have two, and the nature of the area in relation to the home, site characteristics, history of construction and variances, agencies' comments, the county's variance criteria, and the staff conditions and conditions and findings of the The property, as you can see, is located southeast of the city of Lane. And you can see this area with the green star, that's where the property is located. Um, the specific request that's in front of you is for 2519 South Silver Beach Road, and this is the east half of Lot 33 and Lot 34 of Silver Beach Park, which is uh, was reported in 1914. And the property is 0.2612 acres in size, so just a little bit over a quarter of an acre. And you can see that the property actually has a uh, extends out into the center line of the road, Silver Beach Road. So this is why tonight um, we'll hear words such as the center line setback area, restricted right of way, which should find our county code and also under Idaho code to uh, the road infrastructure for Silver Beach Road. And that impacts um, our request tonight. Okay, the zoning in this area is agricultural suburban zoning, and the agricultural suburban zone is established and to uh, be suitable for residential and small scale agricultural use. Single family homes on existing lots of record are in use of right in the zone district. So if you look through the zone district and you look at the minimum lot sizes, they generally are larger and suburban. Uh, but the code does recognize that there are existing neighborhoods such as this. Uh, where they will allow homes to be built on existing lots of record. As you saw earlier, um, our lot is one legal lot of record as well as an additional half. I've included the setbacks, and so you can see here that with residential structures, the front yard setback is 25 feet, the town on the summits, and the rear is 25. And similarly, for accessory buildings, you have the front yard setback 25 feet inside of town. And your rear is a little bit less with 15, as you'll see um, with our rear yard setbacks. Um, we're, we're working with quite a bit of um, site constraint areas. The comprehensive plan also, um, has this area designated as the sub area, and this is a transitional uh, future land use and is moving with the four lane area city. 
And that's important to know because the city of Coeur d'Alene has consulted in preparing the application and we'll seek comments from them. And that's because of the location in the area of the city. As Vlad has mentioned, our proposal tonight is for a 25 foot front yard variance. And the way that the Kootenai County Code reads on this is if you have a setback on a public road that doesn't have a definite right of way to fish your width, um, so again, we're seeing that from those lot lines running out the center line, the setback will be measured from the line 25 feet from the parallel to the center line. So effectively establishing um, almost like a lot line that coincides with the prescriptive right of way that we see under state law. And again, our request is not to intrude into uh, the roadway or even the area adjacent to the roadway where we would see stormwater and snow storage, um, but rather that we are requesting an exception from the actual front yard variance, which you shall see as we go along, we're going to much further into it. So basically, 50 feet into the wild. The circumstances that we believe justify this variance are the nature of the area in relation to the code, site characteristics, the history of constructions, of construction, and variances in the area, and we'll explain that a little bit further, and then the agency's comments in the are debatable. So to begin with, the nature of the area in relation to the code, um, Kootenai County Code, the provision that I just read to you, appears to have been create, created to create these logical setbacks in those areas of property ownership, standing in the roadway, and where a prescriptive right of way exist. And this code language is easily, easily implemented in the county where the lots are larger, there's less intensive. Rain splatter, and not as rugged as what we see in the south of the Bush area. The road infrastructure currently is or can be sized correctly, and on site utilities can be easily accommodated. So, if we think of those areas that are perhaps outside Alcohol, um, lying close to the highways down the valley, uh, um, this code language works really well in those situations. It's much more difficult to apply um, to the Silver Beach area. It's not just because of the train. And so what we see in the Silver Beach area is we see the nature of our In this case, we have existing laws that were added more than 100 years ago that are urban rather than local size. We have these steep slopes that lend themselves to these dramatic views, which makes them very marketable. And the water and the mountains, but they limit the accessibility to the entire we know, as Vlad has mentioned, that there are areas in Silver Beach where slopes may be prone to failure. We know that there's undersized road infrastructure along the length of South Silver Beach Road. We also, being in a rural area, are required to accommodate our utilities on site. And so these setbacks that work so well in the majority of the county are really difficult to implement while maintaining the owner's right to build this single-family structure on the existing line. Um, we do know that there's a history of construction. And when I say history of construction, what I'm referring to is construction that likely predated current modes in which variants would, would not have been required. Um, but we also know that there are variances that were approved in the area. And also in some similar position subdivisions that we see in the nearby communities. And we do know that distinct zoning has not been established for this historic area. Um, it is located within the agricultural suburban and the county has been proactive in trying to allow these uses on existing lots. But it doesn't easily account for the existing environment, and that's why we see the variance request within this area. In our case, um, we have studied our lot and worked with it extensively, and we'll talk about this in some depth. Um, but in short, this lot is unique in that every limitation that I've seen exists, and there are more. Um, so we have existing platted lots that are urban in size. They're about a quarter acre each, and I've already mentioned to you that a portion of that goes out to um, set line. And also that they're undersized in comparison to adjacent owners. 
So if you take a look at the graphic that I show here, and it's included in the narrative in the upper left, where you see the lot lines, I've just highlighted the adjacent lot lines uh, along Lake Four Lane Drive in blue. And this shows you our neighbors and where their property's in. And then in orange, you see where the first lot of property's in. And I size these in, our lots are approximately 70% size of the other lots. And this is even given back to the, you know, the work a lot and a half, basically, for each of these properties. The steep slopes limit access to at least half of the developable property. And then the remainder of that, um, it still remains very difficult to build on. And so you can see in the upper right the topography map and the contours in the area. And as you move to the upper right of the road, it's, um, this would be South Silver Beach Road. You see that you have this very slight flat area. Um, you can also see it in the part of the road. Um, so you see those beautiful views, but you also see the wind out there. And so when you have a situation like this, what that means is um, quite an extensive amount of engineering that you'll be reaching in. We also have the need to accommodate on-site utilities. And in this case, because of our lot being so um, much shallower, we also have to implement very extensive solutions. In so, we also have a very proactive property owner uh, in First Line Properties in Charlotte, who has been working with and um, has constructed an on site water system to improve for local water. And so with that system that has been constructed, there's a need for easements that, that impact um, side lot lines and areas where traditionally you might be able to make a splat um, and move into narrower and move into the side yards and perhaps you just a side yard there. But in this case, uh, the room does not remain there. And Ms. Clark also uh, is uh, very cognizant of the impact to the property owners and to the views. And so she's also designing the property. Also, um, going back to the reason why our lots are a little bit shorter, the reason why they are shorter is because portions of this property were obtained by state transportation um, when East Lake Corn Lane Drive was in their ownership. Um, it has been since transferred to the highway district. Uh, they obtained some land in this area to protect the road prison below from any slides or failures. So in summary, we have an extremely limited building area and a very limited area for on-site utilities. Uh, this site is a challenge, and this is no understatement. Um, we have had a collaborative effort of over nine years and 11 locally based design professionals over six months to design two single family residential home sites. And I think this is a really worth mentioning. This, this isn't just a random request of, gee, we'd like to see zero foot setback. These are locally based design professionals who have been on this side, who have worked together, who have really tried to develop solutions and to go through the collective reasoning process as they develop site design. The option that we're bringing in is an option that's supposed to is really the only feasible option that we see. And there was a lot of back and forth, a lot of discussion involved. Um, but you can see that we have um, every professional, we have civil engineering, we have planning engineering, geotechnical reports, and we have architectural design, two different firms working on a bunch of different sites, land excavator, building contractor, surveyor, and we're sort of developer. Um, we also have a structural engineering that's been involved, um, who just recently uh, created a report that will be submitted with Along with this, we had additional extensive discussions and meetings with the Eastside High District Engineer. This was our engineer, also in engineering, um, who was very collaborative and uh, developed solutions that brought us the letter of um, where they're recommending approval and acknowledging the people with some of the strong concerns that they have related to both South Silver Beach Road as well as the East Portland. This is the site plan for our property. 
And um, this is what has been included in the application You have a revision of this, and it's really to only one area. And this is the area that we have in discussion with your And so you can see at the top, our original plan, and we have stormwater holding tanks, we have our septic treatment and pump tanks, we have our setbacks that are required. Um, but in this case, we were actually bringing some stormwater from the upper portion of the site down to a little area where it would be ripped out. And then we were planning on bringing the stormwater through that area and then discharging it to East Portland. There were concerns that were expressed by the highway district with this, and so we now have a revised site. We're now working with another property owner. And what we're doing is instead of bringing that down to East Portland and Lake Drive, we're actually bringing this on to the adjacent property. We are dispersing the stormwater with a dispersing system. So you can see the detail of that down here in the lower left. I think it's very important to walk through our entire site um, and to understand the use and the logic went into this design. Um, on the very left of this, we see the uh, property with the stormwater holding tank. You see some of that labeling. Um, that's actually located in the east side highway district right away. So you can kind of see our lot to the right. Again, in this area, we have steep slopes. In some cases, they're very near the earth. They're extremely difficult to build structures and infrastructure such as on. So rather than positioning these things out to the far west of our property, we actually have to move them you know, a little bit more internal to the east. So we have stormwater lines also that are coming from the upper portion of the property and down past the house in the side of the setbacks. And they're being, um, and spraying the stormwater from the side of the the area between the right of way home and bringing it to the back of the wall and collecting it with the holding tanks. And these will then discharge into that spreader system on the top to the down. And then again, the property owners that we've worked on this are easy to them. You'll also see our sewer system, which includes pre treatment tanks that um, basically pump the upward hill, the drain hill, to the drain hill. So typically the drain hill lives at a lower elevation, um, but in this case, because the County Health District requires us to maintain specific distances from the top of the escarpment, to ensure that that element is actually pre-treated so slow, um, we have to pump that up. And um, we also have to provide that exploit escarpment separately. So, Moving to the mid lot area, we see here the septic drain fill and replacement drain fill area, which um, the replacement drain fill area is required by Kishi. So, again, um, our pumps here were pumping up the hill. And um, in this case, you can see that the area that we have available for the primary drain fill area and the replacement drain fill really consumes any of the at the top of this garden. Also required by Ken Hendel Health District to have a 10 foot drain fill with the structural separation. And I want to know that this is also a multi purpose area because there are the elevation differences between our lower floor and natural grade. So even as we bring out that basement area, um, we'll still encounter some grade issues. And so within the separation area, we will likely some access stairs that lead to the outward area. Moving further to the east, we move into the primary structure. And in this case, it's important to note that the main floor of the home, and the homes in this case, you see this on the will be at a similar grade to the adjacent road surface. And that's important for a few reasons. The first is the entry into the home. And we want that to be um, close to grade. And the second is that this area attracts retirees and families, and it's very essential to have a to function as a primary space. 
and that really factors into usability. Um, so often when you have a variance um, request, you just solve it. And when you really look at this, the square footage on the main course is fairly limited. Um, but it, we need to have the square footage there for the market to be also the usability and the fact that we have. Um, people who really don't want to be able to store with, um, stairs in their average area. Um, so again, modest square footage is. And you also see that the garages are slightly oversized, and the reason for that is to provide enough space for on street parking um, so that we don't have the demand for on street parking. And if you travel through this area, you'll see vehicles that are parked in the middle. And in some cases, you, that's because some of these structures have been built um, much further out into that restricted driveway. A much more aggressive reduction in setbacks than we would cost you. So um, we're not only honoring that, we're acknowledging that, we're also providing space. Um, as I mentioned, Ms. Clark is very interested in limiting the scale of her structures to two stories to make space in the area and locating the homes closer to the roof protects the adjacent properties. We also were asked by the Kennedy County Community Development staff to ensure that our work needs were not intruding into that area. Um, so we, we did that. We actually had a little bit of intrusion. We had to be able to the sound of the site. And we had to get that bad work. Uh, talked a little bit about the infrastructure, but again, to mention that our side areas, our areas, will, we will be bringing stormwater. And in this case, we actually water system infrastructure located in these, in these silos. So we aren't able to expand and widen the structures. As we move further to the east, we move to the final portion, which is the road interface. And this is really the subject of this request, which is this 25-foot center line offset area. And if you take a look at this graph, the 25-foot center line offset area is this line here. Um, so this is the edge of the prescriptive right of way for the hill. If we were to go another 25 feet back from this, you can see that this would go well um, It's important to know, and I just slapped a little graphic on here for the table. It's not completely scaled, but it shows you in the, the yellow highlight. Um, the surface road width of South Silver Beach Road is an arrow. It's um, 12 feet wide. Six feet in this area on the half way. And the reason that I'm showing this to you is to show you the area that we actually retain. That we retain outside of the physical structure where we can, the highway district is able to put their sound storage, they're able to put some of their stormwater, and we're also able to work collaboratively with them in this prescriptive right of way, which is our own property to be able to place some of our own soils and our own snow storage. Um, so again, we've worked through this. We've had extensive discussion with the East Side Highway District to mitigate the impacts to allow them to continue with their practices and to be able to exercise our property rights. Um, another important note is that the water system, and I mentioned this earlier, there's a lot of detail, so basically, this is the localized system that was established um, to provide for better water quality um, with the area better pressure and variety of things. And so what we see with this, um, this property in this area is actually located across the South Silver Beach Road. And we have a water main connecting to the Syringa Heights system, which we will be site. And then we have maids and valves that come down across the road. And in this area where we have these two little water boxes, these are actually the water reservoirs and pumps that would service a number of different properties in this area. Um, so again, as we look at the development area on the lot, and we look at the side lot, much of that is taken up in these systems. Uh, and then further on, the Sonia Heights main actually runs along the property. So, 
Um, and it's important to know that that entire area as you're running down the escarpment and down the downfall is, is very steeply sloped. And there are vegetative areas. And so if you were to enter or serene the heights where to maintain that system, um, you need a lot of area to system. And, um, so it, it doesn't facilitate the placement of the structures. Um, there is an agreement that the property owners in this area to cross access and the ability to maintain the system. And again, a lot of work has gone into this and a lot of proactive uh, and private property. And on this one and the next, and the next one. Um, a history of construction and variances. And as I mentioned earlier, there are a number of properties within this area that see the footprints of that and are also within the prescription line. And there are many examples. Um, it's hard to get photos and be able to show you that each individual property. Basically, you have to coincide with a depiction of the property. This is just one area on the south side of the beach where you actually see uh, this would be the uh, right away. And if you take a look at that, you can see a lot of these structures that are intruding. Um, what we're proposing not be to intrude on, it would actually be to come back and do a zero point seven on the um, But when we hear of the congestion in the vehicles, uh, you know, things that are in the area, um, there are areas along South Silver Beach Road that have these constrictions. And those are the things that I think often come to mind. This is not proposing. And we also have received comments from the uh, Highway District as well as the Fire District uh, supporting that proposal. And they are the infrastructure and the service providers in the area. So I think that's very important to know. Um, we know that there are homes that have been constructed in recent years that have likely had legal variances. You know, and some that we found that have also encroaching on houses with the East Side Park District. So formal processes to be able to do these types of encroachments. Um, this area may predate current um, code requirements, current state law, and um, we may not be formally on the record. But a good example of that is recent where we have a, a variance process for the county as well as a variance process for the highway district as the guardian which they had um, the same zero foot set out with us that were requesting. But they also went eight feet further into that particular community. And this was a fairly recent process. As to agency comments, the city of Portland agrees that soil can be constructed in the right way. And the East Side Highway District submitted an email on September 24th, 2020, stating that the applicant made changes to the storm work better for the street. We introduced a modified letter addressing that the right of way set out block is shown directly on the site. The stormwater facilities can be placed in the right. And it discusses the need for a geotechnical report and site development, which the owner has developed um, along the structural engineering. They support the new stormwater design approach and the request of the design provisions to the slopes to build the energy plan on the site. Um, which again, the final site plans are tied to building permit, geotechnical report, is, um, and will be submitted to the building. And the health district have no concerns. They have recognized that they've worked with the scarred setbacks as well as the structural setbacks. The main county fire and rescue requested that the length of the plan should be signed with no concerns. The Kootenai County Community Health stated that. This would actually be really important to state that any new construction is not um, The public comments, um, where there were, and I, I noted that Vlad had said that there were two in support. I believe that they were the same letter, um, perhaps including the ties in the packet. Um, but, so, one in opposition, and they discussed the road with the traffic problems and emergency vehicles. Which we've addressed some of those constrictions with the overall road system on the South Silver Beach Road. 
and one in support, which discusses uh, a prescriptive easement. It will be discussing the end application, the existing training features, and the new openness of the management more The various criteria um, of Kootenai County Code, there's a procedural criteria, which is um, the applicable procedural requirements of the and in this case, the owner has submitted an application package that meets all of the similar requirements. And the Kootenai County staff document the steps that have been taken and their required procedural elements. The next is an undue hardship based on characteristics of the site. And the owner has provided information to the existing contracts, undersized data blocks, steep slopes, and scarpings. We need to accommodate on site water, sewer, stormwater infrastructure, maintenance of adjacent views. And PhD requirements for the person to access all the sub-outs and the experiments. All of this demonstrated that the local area is severely limited on site. The owner has also provided additional information regarding surrounding off-site infrastructure and policy and treatments to some locations. The owner has coordinated an expensive and lengthy design process to maximize the building. So, the next criterion is the public interest, and this is that the granting of parents will not be interest. The owner has provided information related to other structures in the subdivision with similar and more aggressive set applications to what is being requested here. The owner has provided information related to the unique nature of the South Central Beach area, in which urban loss exists in North Australia. Utility exist in the majority of lots in the The owner has engaged in a lengthy, expensive, and deliberative process to address the infrastructure and public interest needs of the to explore alternatives in which they are new viable alternatives and to bring forward a well thought out and reasonable proposal to the hearing exam. This request is for this property to be treated the same as others and to continue the pattern of which currently exists in the most unique forms of water. This variance is consistent with the confidence of the yeah, such that there's a prevailing interest has been to approve variances in this area. The next criteria is that this is the minimum variance. Um, in this variance, we do believe, is the minimum variance to make possible the use associated with the cost. It's the minimum necessary for us to construct a home on the property we have, which holds with the existing process stock in the area. Which results in a return of investment on the design and engineering that's gone into this. And this is also not an overly large home in the This is a moderately assigned reasonable request. This home is also consistent in terms of height, area, and design. And as mentioned before, this allows us to exercise similar property rights and to have a use of right and similar existing. Um, the owner has reviewed the recommended conditions and accepts the conditions of approval. And we have reviewed the findings that are required by code, and we do believe that we need all the required findings to have this request. With that, I stand for any questions. Okay, thank you uh, for your presentation. Um, I guess the question I would have. I have would be in your expo in your expo <laughs> exploration of alternatives. Uh, how did you decide on the twenty five uh, foot request? Uh, as in, did you consider twenty feet, uh, thirty feet? Uh, how did you land on twenty five feet? The owner. Um, well, I would say that there was a deductive reasoning process that I'm trying to explain to the hearings. Again, she wanted a moderate amount of square footage within the primary structure and understood that um, the site would be self limiting. And so, um, interestingly, her instincts had been on because as we've gone through this process, this is really where we see um, ourselves landing. She could have requested that additional encroachment into the right of way. Um, but the community development staff 
Um, even providing information they, that was not something that they would be supportive of. And so she followed through with the request for the zero credit sent down. Okay, and then uh, I guess a smaller question. I reviewed the documents and it appeared the driveway was, I guess, roughly 25 uh, feet. I guess my question would be, would that, that large enough to accommodate extra vehicles, guests that may be over the house, so that extra vehicles visiting a house besides the residents, of course, would be able to park in the driveway? Is that considered, is that? Again, um, the owner has been um, on and then Ashley has parking area in front of the home. And I did, within the narrative, um, drill down to that a little bit further. Um, but if you take a look at the area outside of the road, there's only two in front of the house. There's approximately 19 feet within that area. Um, most for the F 150s are in size 17 to 18 feet. Um, so it does allow for that parking to occur outside. And then if you look at kind of the angle of the easement for the prescriptive road right there, um, there's an additional area there where a larger vehicle would be able to move through the garage. Okay, thank you. Um, at this point, I will move to the comments. We have Can I add something oh, to the record? Of course, Vlad, go ahead. Go ahead, Vlad. Um, I would like to just briefly make a statement that I have spoke with Shauna Clark, the applicant, at length about this application, and I just want to make sure that uh, it's clear to the record that staff is always reluctant to support a variance with zero foot setback. And I had asked several times for Shauna before. Um, uh, Ms. Kruger was involved in this application to see if it was possible to design a residence where uh, perhaps it could be offset three to five feet from the edge of the uh, prescriptive easement. And she advised me that there was so there was very limited room um, on the quarter acre parcel with the approved drain field area to build a residence further downhill that she had to utilize every uh, single foot up to the right-of-way or prescriptive easement right-of-way. Um, and I advised Ms. Clark at that time that at this point we would just let the project move forward in the review process and as long as the agency were not opposed to the setback, staff would not uh, make a recommendation for the, the house to move further downhill. So it's not something that we automatically approve from get-go as part of the application process. We make sure that um, it goes through the review and the impacts can be mitigated, but almost always we're reluctant to approve a zero-foot setback. That's more consistent with the historical approvals of a variance where you have at least five to seven to 10 feet back from the easement line or from the uh, actual right-of-way. Okay, thank you. Hope this helps. Yes, thanks. All right, and now we'll get back into the uh, public comment. Um, we do have uh, two residents in attendance uh, who looks like both do not wish to speak, but I will read their names uh, into the record. We have uh, Robert Ostrowski, uh, 1205 Pennsylvania in Coeur d'Alene. Uh, he is in favor, but, but again, does not wish to speak. To speak. We have Sandra Williams, uh, also at 1205 Pennsylvania uh, in Coeur d'Alene, also in favor and does not wish to speak. Um, I guess I'll, I'll read these other We have received online uh, from Connie Kruger uh, in favor of both of these variances. Uh, would you like to speak as a private resident? in favor of the proposal. <laughs> okay. Um, we also have uh, Eric Olson um, submitted uh, online, uh, 705 South River Side Harbor uh, in favor of both variances. 
Uh, I don't, is Eric Olson is on online? Uh, Miss, Mr. Olson, would you like to uh, comment? Unmuted now. Uh, no further comment. I'm, I'm the civil engineer on the project, and I, I just wanted to be present in case there were any questions that came up. Okay, thank you. And then we also have uh, Shauna Clark uh, at 811 South 12th Street uh, in favor of both of uh, the variances. Um, uh, Mr. Clark, would you like to uh, comment on the record? I don't believe she's online. Okay. Yeah, we're here. We're oh, here. okay. Go right ahead. Hi. I, basically, I just want to thank you all for your time and interest in the project and Connie for representing this for us and um, just hoping for the best. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And is there anyone else uh, on Zoom who wishes to uh, enter comment into the record? I know we had one uh, submittal uh, in opposition. I don't think I see the name on there. The only person on, listed on here that we haven't heard from is Kurt Umberger. Was that just Shauna Clark? Could be. I think that was. I think I saw that name pop up. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Okay, I'm, thank you. I'm Shauna's husband. Got she it. chose not to be a burger, though. She chose to retain <laughs> her maiden name. Got it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, so with that, I don't think it would be appropriate for there to be an applicant, re applicant rebuttal, as there have been no comments uh, in opposition. Um, so with that, I will uh, conclude the hearing for uh, variance 20-0005. Um, I suppose we're gonna, we'll, we'll run through this for the, uh, for the next variance. Repeat performance. All right. But, uh, if Mr. Hearing Examiner, if I may, Please. You're up for a few, two minutes. Connie, we are having a hard time hearing you on our side. I believe it might be your microphone. What's happening is your opening statement and each sentence is good for about the first third and then it trails off. It, it seems partly to be your voice trailing off, but it might also be your microphone. I'm glad you told me, thank you. I was able to uh, understand the vast majority of, of what you were saying as well. So, um, yeah, there just there were some times you were cutting out a little bit. Um, so yeah, I guess so. I could ask you to uh, if your microphone's on your computer, just to lean forward uh, maybe a little bit more while you're while you're speaking. Um, so with that, we'll get into the uh, uh, other variance request, uh, variance twenty dash zero 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 six. And again, we'll 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 start with Vlad. Uh, for the uh, staff presentation. That's correct. Once again, for the record, Lat Dinkle with Kootenai County Community Development. This is a request by the same applicant on an adjoining parcel of land directly to the north. Uh, it has the same, uh, it's, it's of the same parcel size, approximately a quarter of an acre in size. Uh, the design aspect of the house location is also uh, zero feet from the existing 50-foot uh, prescriptive easement. I believe that the house perhaps is a slightly different and the stormwater features um, on site are also slightly different. I will let Ms. Kruger address those uh, items. One of the questions that the public may pose is why is it that a, an identical request um, for two separate properties was not combined into one application? As you know, or some may not, um, each and every application has to be reviewed on its own merits. So every single parcel of land in Kootenai County has to have, if a request is made on it, it has to be uh, evaluated based on its 
own criteria and we have to apply the same applicable legal standards and conclusions of law which may be very similar if not identical to that specific parcel in question for that reason when i originally met with um miss clark i advised her that uh, yes we understand your uh, your request and it's on two adjoining parcels but you own but unfortunately they have to run separately but we can run them concurrently so the findings of fact in either of the two reports being specifically this uh, variance request, the AR 20006, is uh, identical to the previous application request that you just heard. There's really not a whole lot of difference. I think some minor nuances that I will let Ms. Kruger address is specifically related to the probably the topographical features of the property. I believe that maybe there are a slightly different uh, slope intervals on, on the adjoining parcel that could present a bit of a different uh, stormwater design. But the fact of the matter is uh, the location of the two houses will be uh, in, in the same, if you will, parallel plane in comparison to the existing Silver Beach Road right away. So really not a whole lot different I, I must mention that we did solicit comments from the same agencies. Um, as Ms. Kruger stated, uh, this is located in the, 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 this parcel and the adjoining parcel are located within the city of Portland ACI. The city official had no concerns. Um, but I also want to add, add into the record that we received a late response from Lakes Highway District official last Friday, dated September 25th, in which um, there, uh, it, there is slight change in language, but I believe the gist of what the highway district will require in terms of stormwater review is the same. And we would like to add it into the record and make sure that um, the applicant complies with the original comment and this one as well, if there are slight changes. Um, and we will make sure that through the site disturbance review process, the highway district not only review but approve the improvements for stormwater and also the uh, certificate of occupancy through the building permit stage on the uh, proposed residence. Uh, we received one comment in support, one in opposition. Same concern with regards to the um, Silver Beach Road being a narrow and congested road. We totally understand it, but um, the area has been built out historically in a manner where with the approval of this request, the new residents will not be encroaching any further into the right-of-way, if you will, or in close proximity to the right-of-way as any other existing residences in the area. Um, we want to make sure that the applicant understands that no um, no roof eaves or any other intrusion or cantilevers such as bay windows or some other features can encroach into, they cannot encroach into the uh, right of way easement. With that, I believe that with a geotechnical analysis in hand with recommendations for future development of this site, uh, we don't oppose this request. We, 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 have, we support it based on the uh, undue hardship related to the characteristics of the site being steep slopes and limited space to develop um, a residence. I stand for any questions that you have at this time. I have no questions for you at this time, Vlad. Thanks. With that, uh, we will um, go back uh, to the applicant representative. Um, if you're uh, ready, Connie. Uh, you may go ahead and present on uh, Variance 2006. I have a quick question for you. Um, sure. Because I'm having a little bit of a hard time here on my end. Um, did you say that you did or did not hear the majority of the last I, presentation? I did, I did hear the vast majority of you was, was following you, so I... You yes, did. I did hear you, yes. Okay. So um, You're coming through I real well right I now. I just cruise through, through things really quickly and just try to hit on the um, slides, which kind of point out some of the differences there. Uh, yes, please. Great, thanks.
Okay. Um, you are aware of who I am. I'm Connie Kruger with Stonehenge Development and Government, and the property owner is First Light Properties, and the uh, First Light Properties are represented by Sean here. Um, we're going to cover a variety of topics, but try to focus in on the primary differences between this and the prior site. Um, so this site that we're looking at right now is actually located just to the north of the property that we just looked at. It also is a lot and a half of the historic Silver Beach Park and is similarly sized to about a quarter of an acre portion of that going out into the Silver Beach Road right you're familiar with the agricultural suburban zoning, which allows this as a use of right, and the comprehensive plan, which um, designates this as being within the area city impact of Four Lane, and with the setback request that we have before you, which is for a zero foot setback. Um, the circumstances in this case are the same. And um, again, this section of code appears to have been. Um, Created and easily implementable in areas that we see in the majority of the county um, where things are flatter, not as rugged, um, and have appropriate infrastructure. In our area, again, this is very steeply sloped. And we're very familiar with undersized infrastructure and need to accommodate utilities on site and the like. Um, in this case, on this lot, we also have every limitation that has been identified before existing, and we have two new items, and that is an existing prescriptive easement for the adjacent property, and this is actually an easement related to the driveway that you see here within this photo, and also some drainage features that are located near this lot. Um, so these abut, or in this case, actually um, cross the property that we're looking at right now and limit the size of the buildable area even further than we had on the other lot. And again, the same design professionals and, um, who have been involved with this project. We do have um, different architects that have been involved with each of the projects and um, have actively been drafting those home plans to provide them for our process, and um, there's quite a bit of time and investment that is going into creating those and um, working with something that we can actually design the rest of the site around. So I think that's important to know. Um, the site plan for this project is a little bit different. Um, the primary difference that you'll see with this is that uh, it's going to be over in this area here on the west. And in that location, we do not have quite the degree of the um, stormwater infrastructure that we have um, off on the other property. Um, so again, kind of zeroing in on this, we have a similar stormwater holding tank. Um, but in this case, we actually take this drain pipe and we pull it over here um, onto the property that we were just discussing. And it will have a larger holding tank that will collect this. We see a similar pretreatment of clump tanks, um, a similar primary drain fill. The site plans look a little bit different because, again, we have different design professionals involved. Um, mid lot area is the same. We have the drain filled areas, we have the setbacks from the structure that are required by PhD. You can see in this case some of the rainwater leaders and some of the stormwater pipes that will run down the sides of the property. Um, the primary structure, if you, the, the square footage of this is, uh, is smaller than on the other uh, home that you see. And here you can, you can see the garage and see the, um, the cars that are placed inside of that. Um, how much of that primary floor area is taken up by the garage? Um, so again, important to have that entry um, at grade with the road for the garage and also have some degree of livable area on the primary floor and not go higher with these structures um, because then we need the existing use in the area. Um, similar uh, situation exists in the road interface. And again, I just placed a little, you know, rectangle over this area that kind of showing you where the physical road would be located. Um, but you can see here that we have area for vehicles to park um, 
in front of the building and not be out within the actual physical area of the building. Um, swales and the shared infrastructure um, is very similar to what we see with the other property. Um, in this case, we do have some um, of the site characteristics that I referred to with prescriptive driveway easement. And this was provided in the comment letter that we received uh, um, this property here. And kind of showing where this driveway comes over on the property that we're talking and then also showing the drainage features that exist here along the side of the lot line. Um, and again, these are areas that we need to maintain free of structures to be able to go in and service them. Um, similar uh, history of construction and variances is the same. Uh, the agency comments um, appear to be the same for this project as they were for the prior project. And the public comments um, also appear to be the same. We uh, have looked through all of the various criteria and believe that we meet all of this criteria. We see the exact same issues on this site. And in this case, we have a further hindrance with the additional uh, easement for the neighboring properties driveway. And as such, we, uh, we've looked at the conditions and agree with the conditions and we feel that we need all of the required findings to be approved for the earnings. All right. Um, for the sake of thoroughness, I'm going to ask the same question I did for the previous variance, um, and that is um, how you arrived on the 25-foot number um, in this variance request. I think it's pretty much the same answer. It's the same property owner who um, sees the same physical features on the property. And um, you know, in this case, as I mentioned, we have an even smaller structure that may be placed on this. So working with their design professional, really see the need to be able to place this out at zero feet. OK, thank you. Um, I will now get into the public comment, and I see now that I read uh, the last two public comments were only written for this application, uh, our two attendees in the audience, uh, Sandra Williams and Robert Ostrowski at 1205 Pennsylvania in Coeur d'Alene are both in favor of this variance request, uh, but do not wish to speak. Is that still true? Okay. Um, and again, we have online uh, submittals. Uh, and I'll give uh, anyone who's still on, uh, online on Zoom an opportunity to comment if they so desire. Uh, and that was, uh, we've got Eric Olson, uh, 715 South Riverside Harbor Drive, in favor of this variance request. Uh, would you like to make a comment at this time, Mr. Olson? I'm good, thank you. All right. And we also have Connie Kruger uh, at 1859 North Lakewood Drive uh, in favor of this variance request. Would you like to make any further comments? No, oh, thank you. All right. And Shauna Clark at 811 South 12th Street also in favor of this variance request. Would you like to make any comments? I am in favor, yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. And we'll double check that there's nobody else on Zoom who wishes to comment for the record. All right, looks good. that looks good. Nobody else is there. Um, with that, if there's no more questions or comments from uh, anyone else, uh, that will uh, conclude tonight's hearings uh, for these uh, three requests. Uh, thank you for your time. Have a good evening. Thanks, sir.